I'm Jacob Soberoff. You're watching HuffPost Live. I'm joined in studio right now by director Eugene Jarecki. He's the director of uh, of uh, The House I Live In. It's a, it's a, a Sundance Film Festival award-winning documentary um, about the profound effects of uh, America's war on drugs from every level. Um, drug use, the war on drugs. Um, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. How's it going? Uh, very well. Very well. It's an exciting time. So your film comes out October 5th uh, in Los Angeles, Octo uh, in New York, excuse me, and October uh, 12th here in L.A., is that right? Yes. And what was it that turned you on to, to this topic? Oh, my whole life. I mean, I, was, I grew up in a relatively, uh, in a quite sensitive household toward the African-American experience in America. I came from Jews who had fled Nazi Germany and thought that the story in America of struggle and the saga of struggle by the voiceless was a sister struggle to the, the struggle of Eastern Europeans who fled. And so growing up uh, at a time in the post-civil rights era, I was uh, concerned at what I thought were um, obstacles to black progress. Uh, for African Americans who you would have thought uh, had come into their own after the civil rights movement, we saw that the leading indicators uh, about education, about job, uh, sustainability, about family, so many indicators were suffering for black Americans. And I, as a person who was very close with a lot of black families, I wondered why. And uh, that led me by one turn or another to understand that probably the most fundamental element that had come to thwart black progress in America for the masses of people was the war on drugs. We need the public to demand from their public policymakers something better than tough on crime, something more like smart on crime, something that might produce an outcome that could change the lives of people and make society better. Instead, what we do is we take a person who may have a drug problem, which is, after all, a kind of yeah. health problem, and we say to them, I understand your pain, and I'm going to raise you about 10 more uh, elements of pain and make it far worse for you. And that has been dysfunctional. It's meant we have 2.3 million people behind bars, more than any other nation on Earth. Incredible. It's a 700% increase in our prison population since 1971 when this war on drugs was declared. And so I look at how can we fix it. I want to bring in uh, members of our community, if you don't mind. Please do. And we'll have a conversation with them as well. Uh, Daniel Holton Roth is joining us from uh, New York City. Reed Bernstein is uh, here in L.A. And Janessa Jaffe is uh, also here in Los Angeles. Welcome, everybody. Janessa, I know that you're concerned with the issue of over-incarceration. Um, do you have a, a question in particular for Eugene that you want to ask? Yeah, I guess just in the course of filmmaking, um, what were some of the more shocking things that you came across? And did you experience any resistance when you tried to uncover this story? Did you find any resistance in any corners? You know, it's interesting. The most shocking part was the willingness of those on the inside to speak so candidly. My film is a, is a study in the majesty of human beings willing to tell you what they most feel and what they most want to see change while they themselves need to be agents of a system that is, in their eyes, uh, quite broken, but they are doing the best they can with the resources made available to them. I wouldn't call that shocking, but it was the part that was most surprising. The gulag conditions of how we treat humans in this country, that's the shocking part. Once you move past the shocking part into that which is surprising, what you end up with is just being so touched and and uh, and driven and motivated by the way in which a security chief in my film, I sit down to talk to him, and I think he's going to tell. I I think he's going to be the prototypical lock him up and throw away the key kind of guy. And I, his name is Mike Carpenter, and he's an extraordinary human being who I discovered as an extraordinary human being because he starts talking to me about how what he's doing has terrible similarities to what was done with the British penal colonies off to Australia, loading people into boats and getting rid of them, and Nazi Germany. And you listen to a prison guard in the United States of America looking at what he's doing with any historical analogies of that kind. You've met an amazing person and you have a system that is woefully broken. Reed, let, re, let's go to you. Uh, I want you, have, uh, want you to have a chance to weigh in here. Um, go for it. You've got the floor. <laughs> well, first, I can't wait to see what the director's film, but I wish Americans would be a lot less sanctimonious and a lot more insightful uh, like Mr. Durecki. Um, I have a question uh, about rehabilitation, because, of course, that's going to be part of any um, solution to the war on drugs. Uh, I was wondering if the Affordable Care Act uh, under Obama has any, anything about um, you know, having insurance companies deal with uh, drug rehabilitation under that, under that act. 
The problem is any approaches that have been efforted like that, and there were efforts along the way in developing the Affordable Care Act, which was already under such fire that you can imagine the internal conference room conversations that go on about putting a, you know, about putting a, uh, a real hot button issue like that into an attackable visible place. And so what you find in Washington are efforts all along the way to fight mandatory minimums. You find efforts, probably the most notable in the country right now is uh, is Congressman Bobby Scott's initiative called the Youth Promise Act. Anybody wants to Google that act, that is one of the most helpful and important pieces of legislation people can be considering.